Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer 2 inch by 2 inch trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Ford Explorer. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when installed on the Explorer. And the great part about it that I like is the fact that it's a hidden cross tube and what that means is it simply hides a lot of the structural part of the hitch behind the bumper leaving really only the receiver end and giving you a clean look kind of overall. Um, that way you don't have a whole bar hanging down and it's got a nice black powder coat finish on it not only to protect it but also to give you kind of a stealthy OEM look and overall I think it does a fine job of that. Now, having a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening is gonna be great for a bunch of different accessories, whether it be your ball mounts, your bike racks, cargo carriers, or pretty much whatever uh, life brings you. This is gonna be pretty much a standard size, so it's gonna really open up the window of what accessories you could get loaded on there. Now, when you do load your accessories, you're gonna have a 5 8 hitch pin hole, and that way you can actually put them in place and they're gonna stay in place. Now, the hitch does not come with a pin and clip. A lot of your accessories, when you purchase them, will come with them, but if you wanna pick up a locking one, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer and that way when your accessories are loaded up you can lock that and know that your accessories aren't going to walk away in the hands of someone else. You're also going to see a rolled style safety chain loop here so that's going to be great when you are towing to hook up large clevis style hooks or just kind of your standard hooks with no problem. Now if you are planning on towing, you're probably going to want to know the weight capacities and your gross trailer weight rating on this hitch is going to be 6,000 pounds and that's a pretty good amount. It's going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. Now you also have a tongue weight rating which is the downward pressure of the inside of the receiver tube opening and that's going to be 600 pounds. So think of your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks and 600 should be plenty for a lot of those accessories. Now before hooking up to that trailer, you're gonna to wanna to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's actually capable of towing and compare that with the gross trailer weight rating of the hitch. Take the lower of those two numbers and that way you're staying safe. Now getting a few important measurements, we're gonna measure from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. And we're gonna be right at about three inches. And that's important to note for some of your folding accessories, you wanna make sure that you have clearance against, or that way it's not making contact with your fascia. But really you're pretty close um, to being flush with it. So you shouldn't have to worry too much, but something to keep in mind when choosing accessories. Now we're also going to get our ground clearance here. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're looking at up 15 inches. And that's a pretty good ground clearance. I don't ever worry about this making contact with the ground, but some of your accessories as you have them loaded up, they can actually stick out a little bit. And as you go up an incline, kind of dip down close to the ground. So again, something to keep in mind while having those loaded up and driving. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's not terribly hard to do, but you are gonna be doing some trimming. And part of that is gonna be your heat shield. So making sure you have something that can kind of cut through that metal, as well as some safety glasses and gloves is gonna be ideal to have on hand. You're also gonna be trimming a little bit of the fascia here, but also that's kind of to give it that nice clean look with that hidden cross tube. So overall, not too terribly hard to do in your garage or driveway. And I'm gonna walk you through each of those steps to get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be lowering down the exhaust and that's gonna gain us the clearance. Not only to get our heat shields out that will need to be trimmed, but also that's where it's going to mount up. Now, before we lower our exhaust down, we don't want the whole exhaust system being unsupported as that can actually cause damage to the exhaust system. So if you're doing this in your garage or at home on a driveway, you might wanna grab some blocks of wood or something that you can put underneath the exhaust, but still allow for it to drop down. Now, since I'm on a lift, I'm gonna be using a cam buckle strap and just kind of creating a cradle for our exhaust to rest. Now the lowering of the exhaust is going to be pretty easy compared to a lot of other ones because normally you pry off the rubber isolator, but the forward brackets here are kind of nice. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt up top here. It's gonna be hard to see, but I'm gonna just take my 10 millimeter uh, deep well socket with my ratchet and I'm gonna just take this down and this should cause the exhaust to lower. Now there's gonna be one bracket on each side, so make sure you get both of those taken down. And once you have that bolt out, these brackets actually hook into the frame, so you're gonna to wanna to just lift this up a little bit, and then uh, if you kinda of move this around, once we get this popped down, I'll show you. So you have this little tab here that just kinda of sits in the hole. So just kinda of lift that up, pull that out, and do that on both sides. 
Now, while taking down those two brackets has given us a little bit of wiggle room, we still have two isolators right here by the rear cross member, and we're gonna wanna take these down as well just to get this to drop. Uh, now, this one you are gonna need, a pry bar really works well here, and you're gonna wanna just kinda get some leverage using the exhaust pipe here, and just pry on this, and you may have to kinda work at it for a little bit, but these should slip over. Now, you can do the top or the bottom, it does not really matter. And if you're having trouble with these, sometimes over time they can kind of fight you a little bit. You can use a little bit of penetrating oil or some soapy water, and that'll help kind of lube it up to get these to pop off pretty easy. So there's one. And then right on the other side, you got another one. Now with this lowered down, that's gonna gain us access to the heat shields, and you can see why we're using something to support because our next ones are pretty far up and we don't want the exhaust pipe to flex and cause any damage. So now that we have this drop down, we are gonna be removing our heat shield. So you're gonna have a few 10 millimeters. It looks like we have four, and then on the side here, we actually have uh, a few seven millimeters, it looks like one here, and then one on the inside of the wheel well. Uh, the other side also looks to be just about identical, so we'll go ahead and get all of our hardware off. Now during all of this process, I highly suggest keeping all your hardware organized. It's gonna make it a lot easier for reinstallation of everything. Now you're gonna see it's still held in place. You have, uh, our heat shield has some tabs that kind of bite onto the studs. So just kind of pry away to pull this down, get these off of those studs, and we should be able to get the, our heat shield removed. Now go ahead and you're gonna also wanna take off the heat shield on the other side of the vehicle. So now we need to remove our factory bolt here. This is gonna be a 21 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and there's gonna be one on each side and we'll get these removed. Might be uh, kind of tight here, so just kind of work at it. And these will not be going back on the vehicle, so you can do whatever you want with them, but uh, these don't need to be stored for later. Now, if you do have kick sensors on your Explorer, you are gonna have an extra step of drilling out some rivets just to move that wire track. Ours does not, um, so you're just gonna have to refer to the instruction manual if you do have that kick sensor. But we are going to move along. We have these brackets. There's gonna be one on each side. It has a seven millimeter uh, bolt there. We're gonna remove that, and that's gonna allow this to flex a little bit to get our hitch in place. So now we need to trim our fascia, and this is just gonna make room for that receiver hitch opening here. Now, if you do have that kick sensor, you're gonna to wanna to take the wires out of the wire tray that's in there. Um, if not, you're gonna be cutting through potentially both of them, so just kinda of keep that in mind. Now, you can use a pair of shears to kinda of cut through here. You can use a rotary tool such as a Dremel. I'm gonna be using just an oscillating tool here. But uh, I put the tape here just to kind of follow some nice clean lines. You don't have to do that, but it sure makes it a lot easier to follow a straight line. So we're gonna go ahead and get this trimmed out. So you can see I got the fascia plastic cut, but we still have this wire track here. So again, ours does not have that kick sensor, but if you do, make sure you move those wires before cutting through that. So now that we have these cut out, I'm gonna go back with a flat blade of a knife um, and also maybe a file just to kind of get some of these burrs off and uh, we can kind of clean up some of our cuts as well. While we have our cutting tools out, we're gonna be trimming our heat shields as well. And using the instruction manual, you're gonna cut a square here 
they have the dimensions in there. Uh, you can always trim a little bit more later on, but the main thing is we're making clearance for our hitch to go in this spot. And this is just gonna be an access hole where we're gonna have a bolt um, that we're gonna feed through, and that's where the hitch is gonna mount up. So you can uh, just kind of trim what they suggest, and then we may have to trim a little bit later on, but for now, this is gonna be pretty easy to do. Now, this can get pretty sharp, so make sure you have gloves and safety glasses on when you do this. So now we're gonna to need to grab a spacer block as well as a carriage bolt and our fish wire. And what we're gonna be doing is getting this to become a stud to mount up the hitch. Now you're gonna see this one doesn't fit in here. So this is gonna be our access hole. So what we're gonna do for this one here is take our coiled end of the fish wire. And sometimes if you need to put a bend here to kind of catch it on the other side, we're just gonna feed this over to that access hole. You just kind of feel around for that coiled end and pull that through. And then you're gonna take your spacer block and we're gonna just feed that in. So put that over the coil. You can slide that in there. And then we'll just take our carriage bolt and we're gonna thread it onto the coiled end. And then from here, we can push this into that access hole. And then as we bring it over, we've created a mounting stud for our hitch. Now we're gonna be doing this one as well. This is gonna be a reverse fish wire technique. And so it's pretty similar, but what we're gonna actually do is take our coiled end here and just kind of hold it, put your spacer block on, and then you can feed your carriage bolt on the threads. And we'll just feed both of these up. And then that should pull down like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. So now we'll take our heat shield that is trimmed and we're going to be feeding this up and mounting it back up. Now there are fish wires here. What you're gonna wanna do is actually feed them through the heat shield. So let me get this in place and I'll show you how. You'll see this first one uh, towards the rear of the vehicle. That's gonna go in this large circle. And then this next uh, one that goes to the forward side of the vehicle, that's gonna go in that square that we uh, trimmed open. And then we're gonna just get this mounted back up using those 10 millimeter and seven millimeter nuts. It's kind of nice, these studs here, once you kind of press them up, they'll kind of hold it in place for you while you're getting your hardware. So now with an extra set of hands, we're actually gonna put the hitch in place. Now I suggest having your bolt and a flat washer ready, and that's gonna go in the first hole here. That's where that weld nut, where the bolt was, uh, we're gonna be putting that up. And we're gonna wanna just get a few threads to hold up our hitch. Now we're also gonna wanna feed the corresponding fish wires through here, um, and that way we'll have those ready. So first thing, we'll kind of raise this up over the exhaust. And we may have to actually peel back the fascia a little bit to kind of gain access, but we took off those bolts. So this should flex enough to where we can kind of peel this back and it's gonna kind of live up here. So uh, you may have to kind of work at it a little bit, but um, this should go up kind of where the kick sensor lives. So now I'll get my fish wires ran through here. There's one and Get the other one here. And with those fed through, you'll see that's where our weld nut or our new bolt is gonna go in here. So as long as we get that kind of started, it's gonna hold the hitch up and it's gonna make it easier for the rest of the hardware. Now following the instructions, they gave some dimensions. They're not always spot on. So I actually, you see this groove, this is where the part of the hitch is gonna actually feed in there, but the hitch is quite a bit longer. So we're gonna need to trim this back and it looks to be kind of right before where this starts to bend. Um, we're gonna make this a straight line cut back 
Um, so if you have already put your heat shield on, you can use just a pair of shears and just go light here uh, to kind of open this up. Uh, if you haven't actually mounted this up, just kind of note that you're gonna want to extend this to make clearance for that. So we ended up cutting it back about 10 inches rather than the five that were instructed in the instructions. So now this should have a clearance to be able to get that hitch up and in place. So now we'll again feed our fish wires through those holes and we'll get this weld nut um, with our new hardware and have our hitch at least suspended in place, making it easier to get our hardware on. So now we'll just push up, align that hole, and just kind of get this hand tightened on, just enough threads to hold this up. Now with these hand tightened, I want to kind of cinch it up a little bit. It's going to give us a little bit of extra thread to be able to get our pull wire uh, hardware down. And what we're going to be doing is hand tightening on our flange nuts here. So you can take the pull wire off. Now it's very important that you don't push this back in the frame rail. So you can, if you can get a finger on here to kind of give it some pressure, that's going to help. But just be uh, light here to not push it back. But once we get these started, we'll just continue on doing that with all of them. And that way we'll have all of our hardware in place. Now with all of our hardware loosely put in place, uh, I'm gonna just tighten these down. Now we don't have to get too crazy here because we are gonna go back with a torque wrench to make sure they're that, at the proper torque setting. Um, if you are struggling to get these to start, you can actually start to tighten these down and it'll pull that hitch up. Uh, in order to do that, this large bolt here is going to be a 15 16 and then these flange nuts, these are going to be a 3 quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all tightened down. Now with those tightened down, we're going to go back with our torque wrench and your torque settings are going to be in the instruction manual and they are going to be significantly different for the larger bolt here and uh, rather than these flared nuts. So just make sure that you are adjusting your torque wrench accordingly. Now, if you need to pick up a torque wrench, we actually have them available here at eTrailer or generally you can rent them from an auto parts store, but this is going to be an important step. It's going to make sure that we have these tight enough. Uh, to where they're not going to become loose over time, but also you don't have too much stress on the threads by over tightening. So now we'll just go through, make sure we torque these down to proper spec. So now everything's tightened and torqued down. So we're going to make sure that we put our seven millimeter uh, screws back in this portion here to make sure that the fascia is not moving around. And then we're going to get our exhaust back up in place. So now getting our exhaust back up, I suggest getting the rubber isolators back on. It's gonna make it quite a bit easier and you're gonna have a little bit more room to get these to work. Now you can kind of move the exhaust side to side. That way you can kind of get this in place. Just press these on. And now we can go ahead and get the brackets by the mufflers attached as well. Now you're going to be able to see the slot that this feeds into. Just make sure that that goes back in place and that's going to kind of hang it right where you need it to be to put your hardware in. Now with our exhaust back in place, you can take whatever you are using to support your exhaust out. And then all that's left to do is start using our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Ford Explorer.